Hey, just a quick video of uh, doing the secondary um, pressure on uh, when you're using a torsion spring. Um, torsion spring in the uh, secondary. You've got your holes, like this is a Dalton, and it's got holes. You can't really see them because they're underneath the uh, washer here. But uh, you've got different holes to put your, your tang into of your secondary spring. So as you change those holes, you change the pressure. And what everybody talks about by the pressure is this is the pressure of the um, sliding sheave when that'll start to move. Um, of course, you have to put your parking brake on. So put your parking brake on, take your belt off, and then what we want to do is we want to measure when that initially gets pulled. And uh, so how we do that is what, how I do it, and I've been doing it for years, is I've got my old fish scale. So you just get an old fish scale, and you've got all your pounds marked on there. And um, I've got a mark right around 19, 20 pounds, which is where I usually like it. Um, now stock, they're usually around 16 pounds, and it really depends on how your clutching is. With this really steep helix, I've got a big Dalton uh, secondary spring in there, which is heavier than the old beige, and um, I'm setting it closer to 24 pounds with this particular setup, but most, most guys are going to be around uh, 16 pounds, maybe 18 pounds, depending on your setup. Um, this is something that a lot of guys these days don't know about because I think they stopped making these, but Skidoo used to make these. It's a little, uh, I don't know, it's a little clip, I guess. Um, I had to tweak it a little bit. I had to bend this a little bit more down here and grind this out a little more so it would hold good. But basically, this sets right on your secondary. I'm going to try to show it here. See, it kind of uh, sets in there. So now it gives you a hook on the top. And uh, that's what you want. You, you basically want, I don't know if you can see that any better. If I can put the light on it. There, see how that is? And now you've got a hook on the, uh, the top of the... Uh, secondary now you know if you don't have that and i don't think you can buy those anymore what we used to do in the old days is we used to take a pair of vice grips and and a cloth so you don't hurt the surface and just lightly um clamp the vice grips right on the outside edge of your movable sheave here um and uh then you can hook your fish scale onto it and pull it, but uh, you definitely want to put a, a nice rag on there or something so it doesn't scar up the surface. Um, so there's the clip on there. So then you just take your take your fish scale and um, you hook it on there, and then you pull. And see, I've got this set up pretty high, but um, so you pull this. And as soon as it breaks free, you take a measurement, and then you let it go. And as soon as it goes back, you take another measurement. So this one is like 26, 27, and then like 18, 19 going back. So you take those two measurements, and then you average those. And that's your out and closed, out and closed. You take those two measurements, you average them, and that gives you your secondary pressure um, and then what I like to try to do is once I know that I'll put a mark on my helix at each hole like I think that mark um, if I'm not mistaken is 19 pounds and then the next one over was 29 pounds so it seems to me on a Dalton helix every hole is 10 pounds so then what you can do is you can turn it around 180 degrees the other way and you should fall exactly halfway in between those two measurements. So, um, yeah, and you can see there exactly 20, uh, 180 degrees on the other side, I ended up at 24 pounds. 
which is what I'm trying right now. So um, if you're messing with a Dalton um, and you can't get it within five pounds of where you want to be, just turn it around 180 degrees and those two opposite side holes, basically the two holes on the opposite side will fall on either side of your current measurement. So you should be able to easily get to every five pounds, um, approximately, um, every four to five pounds on a Dalton, uh, helix. Um, and then just one other thing. I mean, years ago, I, I made up this little chart years ago. It's just basically, uh, you know, on the old, the old helix is the, you had a B and C and you had one, two, three, four, five, and six, um, coinciding and basically what I did is I, I took every possible measurement and I kind of put down every possible um, result in pounds. Now of course that's years ago and we don't really have ABC anymore and we don't really have one two three anymore uh, five six so um, so really uh, you know you've just got you've got your basic holes um, Dalton has holes all the way around it, and then on the uh, sheave end, on the other end, you basically just got one hole that you deal with uh, as far as the uh, the other end of the spring. Um, I think, and then there's the other, I should show this too, a lot of guys have been asking for this. Um, this is the, this is the Dalton uh, yellow silver. Um, it's a 4978 yellow silver. That's just slightly heavier than the stock 1200 spring, just slightly. And what I'm running now is a Dalton yellow red or red yellow, whatever you want to call it. That's a 8125. Um, that's not what's in this bag. This bag is the is the purple compression, but that's that uh that label is the one that's in there now. Um, and then just to show you, um, this is a stocker. This is the stock 1200 um, compression. Pretty wimpy, or sorry, not compression, torsion. Pretty wimpy spring. Um, so a lot of guys that are sticking with the E-Drive are just going up to the, the, the next size in a Dalton. Um, here's my stock Helix, and this kind of just gives you an idea of the holes. Those are the holes where the tangs go in underneath the uh, the washer, so you just can't you can't see them on the Dalton because of the washer with the adjuster. Um, but that's what the holes look like underneath. And then uh, on the back side, you know you can see that the one hole was being used because of where the uh, the spring left a little bit of a, a black mark there. Um, but then you've got all those other other spots where you can you can get different pressures. So you got to play around with it. Um, you know, you just got to play around with it. And the nice thing is, is you use your fish scale. So every time you use your fish scale, um, you know if you're getting stiffer or or less stiff. And that's uh, really what you want to play around with. That's that's one of the nice things about using the torsion is you don't have to keep buying all these different springs. Um, you get a spring you know, kind of probably like the, uh, the, the, uh, the lower Dalton spring is going to be best for most guys. And then you can change your pressure up or down, which will result in higher or lower uh, shift patterns. And, uh, you know, like trail speed RPMs and um, top RPMs can change somewhat, but not as much as your, your mid-range RPMs. Um, so, uh, so a lot of guys like to torsion. It tends to run a little cooler. You're not going to have as much back shift or engine braking as the, the big compression. Um, but, uh, but that's what I've been playing with this week. And, um, you know, you know, clutching, you can, you can clutch these 1200s 20 different ways and everybody will say theirs is the best. And, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of them work. A lot of them work because we got such a wide torque band on the 1200. Um, you know, when you get into the E-Tex, you don't you don't have as as much of that luxury 
because the uh, the torque band is just so so much smaller um, anyways just wanted to post that up and there's that uh, you can kind of get a good look at that there's that hook and that um, that setup there that's pretty much what it looks like you know just a just a regular old hook and of course like Skidoo used to sell that and then just a regular old fish scale works fine or whatever whatever kind of scale you got around as long as it's somewhat accurate and the interesting thing is, is it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate um, if you're doing a lot of testing you know because you can kind of say well my scale says 14 now my scale says 18 so you know you've gone up um, it just you know needs to be somewhat accurate if you're comparing it with other guys on the internet that are telling you they're running 18 or 19 or 20 and you're trying to get close to what they're running so you, you do want to have a somewhat accurate scale um, I don't think my scale's super accurate but uh, but it's it, it seems to work for what I'm doing and it, it lets you know if you've gone up or down at least um, Okay, guys, so uh, I guess that's it. So I uh, just wanted to post that, and uh, I'll upload this. And uh, anybody watching this that is not familiar with Dewtalk, jump on over to dewtalk.com, go into the 1200 forums, and uh, I'm under Rocker Dan, and there's all kinds of videos and pictures and all kinds of stuff in there, um, and there's a lot of smart guys over there. So uh, head over there and check it out.